the beginning of November 2010 was really a golden period for the kiwi food industry. It was an easy crop to manage, the industry was growing well, and then suddenly everything changed on the 5th of November 2010 when we discovered in a sample that we'd been sent that PSA was now here in New Zealand. That was a really scary day for us because it meant that that world that we'd been in before was fundamentally changed and the science was really going to have to dig deep and step up to find a solution. Well look, it was very confusing for the grower community at that point and there was a lot of people that were very scared. That put real pressure on the science because we didn't have the answers either. But what we had to do was quickly formulate a team of people that could dig down, work out what the issues were and come up with some very practical solutions. We pulled a team of well over 100 people together to be able to do this. We needed a big range of resources, a wide range of skills, and we wanted to be able to move really fast. That caused us to actually operate in very, very different ways. Scientists are naturally conservative in making their predictions, and so we work to very high confidence levels often. Here there was a burning platform for the industry that we couldn't wait to be absolutely sure of what we were doing. We had to find workarounds to that in the way we approached our science to be responsible in what we were doing, but as well get information out really quickly to the industry so they could act. After a few weeks, it became pretty clear that things were spreading and it became very confusing for a period of time because some of the early tests that we had done were suggesting that PSA seemed to be everywhere in New Zealand, certainly a lot of kiwi fruit crops. And that didn't make sense because this very serious disease only appeared on a few orchards until we realised we were actually dealing with two variants of exactly the same thing. Two variants of, of the bacterium, one that was being very devastating and one that had a more minor effect. And that was a breakthrough point, really one of the first breakthroughs of the science to help to understand what this actually meant. Soon it became pretty clear that eradication wasn't an option and we needed to swing into a new phase for the science which was about living with PSA. How do we live through it and beat it in a sense that it's going to be here all the time but we've got new ways of doing it. Now that's a, a huge challenge for the industry and for the science to come up with a completely new way of growing kiwi fruit that was very, very different from what it had been up to that point in November 2010. One of the things that we had to do here was screen through a huge amount of germplasm to look for what might be a more tolerant variety than the existing Quart 16A variety that was falling over quickly with the disease. And that was a very, very complex issue of finding new screening methodology that could be developed and rolled out quickly, a way of trawling through all the different options that actually existed and find something that could be better for the industry. By screening that wide range of germplasm and working through and actually understanding what genetics gave the edge, we've come up with the Gold 3 variety as the answer. But that in itself isn't enough. There's a number of things, other things that we need to do that the science is telling us are important as well. One of those is the way that the orchard is managed and the removal of disease quickly. Another is actually managing of the disease when the risk periods actually come about so that that can be overcome and use of different approaches to actually develop that. And at the moment we're working on a new generation of disease management tools that can actually be used as well. So forecasting when there are risk periods and bringing in new ways of actually controlling the disease that are acceptable to the consumers and acceptable to markets is a big part of living with PSA. What this incursion meant for us is we've actually come up now with a whole new way of designing tests, of doing our science that's faster, that's more responsive, and that's really changed the game for us in the way that we do our science. And that's positioned us very well to be able to cope with future incursions like this. And it's also positioned us very well for taking our science forward to really position New Zealand at the forefront here. PSA took the industry to the brink and the industry and the science team has stepped up that now that industry is pushing towards a $6 billion target in the future and that's a fantastic thing to see happening.